Good evening. It's great to get to talk to a body of students. I, of course, I want to talk about public banking and why we need them. But first, before I get to my PowerPoint, I just wanted to say I, um, I actually had to do an interview with uh, Fox News this morning. It was like four minutes. But it was on, it was on the, uh, um, the possibility of a uh, student debt jubilee. And of course, they're totally opposed. But so what I was arguing was that it's actually quite possible and it's feasible. Uh, the, the Federal Reserve in quantitative, the, only the Federal Reserve can do it because they're the only, that's the only body that has the power to just create money with the county entries. It won't cost the ta taxpayers a penny. Uh, quantitative easing one involved $1.3 trillion of um, toxic mortgage-backed securities that were bought off the books of the banks, Wall Street banks, of course. Um, not that they deserved it, so you can, you know, you can, whether you can argue whether the students deserve it, but hey, did Wall Street deserve it? Um, and now they're talking about quantitative easing four. Quantitative easing three sort of slipped by everybody. It was a, a big disappointment. And so, so the market wanted more. You know, the market crashed, and so allegedly the market spoke and wanted more. And so Ben Bernanke said, said, we can do more, we're prepared to do more. And then they didn't exactly say what, but um, there was a, um, the, a former vice president of the Federal Reserve Board wrote an article where he said that what they're talking about next is asset-backed securities. They're not gonna do um, uh, federal securities this time. They're gonna do asset-backed securities like they did in quantitative easing one. Well, there's now $1 trillion in student debt outstanding. It's the big, it's the next crisis. And it, it, it is toxic in the sense that the students can't afford to pay this debt back. And they can't get out of it. You know, you can't file bankruptcy. So it's, it's a big toxic time bomb on our hands. So we have to do something about it. So what they could do is, for QE4, buy up $1 trillion in asset-backed securities backed by student loans and rip them up. And what would happen is um, it, it would not hurt that, it would not inflate prices as everybody fears, you know, this would be a trillion dollars that you're adding to the money supply. Because according to the Fed's own figures, the money supply has shrunk by three trillion dollars <laughs> since 2008. So we need three trillion dollars more out there just to put the money supply back to where it was before this, the Wall Street crisis. So, you know, that's still only one third of what we need. So it would be very stimulative to the economy because what we need in the economy is demand. Like we need consumers out there buying stuff. And who does the most buying? The young people. They buy the new homes, they buy the cars, they buy the electronics, they frequent the malls. It's the students who love to shop. I mean, the old people already, or the you know, more mature people are. <laughs> We already have what we need, you know, more or less, pretty much. So, so older people and bankers and rich people and the 1%, they do not shop. They use their money for money making more money. And so that's, what's, that's why you have this parasitic drain off the top of the, off the, top of the system pulling profits out. They're not, they're not reinvesting their money into the economy. They're reinvesting it into money making money. In other words, they don't say, here's my dollar, give me a loaf of bread. They say, here's my dollar, give, me, give it back to me with more. And so it's, all, you know, it's always the, this um, mathematical unsustainability, which I'll get to. Okay, so that's my literal, little <laughs> pitch for what the Fed should do with their quantitative easing for and how you might get out of your student debt quite neatly and cleanly and we should have been paying for student debt in the first, I mean, we should have been paying tuition in the first place. I, I, I went to Berkeley for free. It was free when I, in the 19, I hate to reveal my age, but it was free <laughs> when I went to Berkeley. And, um, and I went to UCLA Law School for $600 a year, and that was tuition. It is now $35,000 a year. This is a state school. That's $35,000 a year for in-state students, $45,000 for out-of-state. So that all of that should have been free. If, if we 
put kids all the way through high school, we should put them through college. Why, why do we stop at high school? And it, it's not an expenditure, it's an investment. As the GI Bill proved, the GI Bill was one of the most lucrative investments the government ever made. It returned 200% just in taxes. In other words, they got back twice as much in taxes as they put out there. And it returned 600% in terms of stimulating the economy. So if the government did that again, let's say with a trillion dollars in waiving tuition, you could even waive the, the past tuition, you know, for people who would, you could do it retro retroactively and just get that money out there. It would be a very good investment for the, it would be good for the economy, be good for the people, it would restore the possibility of the American dream for young people who instead of getting out of school with this huge debt burden on the back, their backs would actually have the possibility of getting a job and um, doing you know, science and arts and all the things that, that we should be investing in.